Hey guys, it's about time for a change. I've been at this uh, channel for about two years now and haven't made a really big change. So we're going to go ahead and make a big change. So hope you like it. Bam! There you have it. Go t <laughs> Alright, so it wasn't really a big change to the channel, but a big change to me. Uh, I've been thinking about it for a while and there you go. If I don't like it, the easy thing is it can always grow back. Alright, back to the channel. Hey folks, welcome back to another edition of RV with the Tanners. Uh, today we're going to talk about the washer and dryer install that we did. You can see it right here. <laughs> it's not in focus, I know that. I will show you better pictures. Um, but I'm going to do this video in a little bit different than most people have done their washer and dryer. We're going to go through a time lapse and show you how uh, the first time lapse shows you how we installed the washer. And the second time lapse is how we did the dryer. And rather than just show you step by step in that video process, again, it's going to be a time lapse. I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things that were key to us in getting the install done properly. Um, so I'm going to uh, talk about that and then I'm going to roll the video. So first off, when we installed the washing machine in the trailer, we have a couple of moving uh, straps that go over your wrist. It's made it really simple uh, to carry the washing machine in. That's the heavier one. The dryer is a lot lighter. Uh, but that made it nice to bring it in, up into the door and then into that little compartment back there. We did have a little bit of a hiccup. We had to take the trim off uh, of that doorway. And then what you'll see later on is a couple of tension bars holding the trim back on because I don't have a one of those staple guns that lets a headless nail go through. Uh, so we just used glue and then put it back in, you know, Elmer's glue, and then we use the tension bars. Some things we needed. Uh, the safety precaution, we have a drip pan underneath the washing machine. You'll see us install that. Um, I'll put a link to it down below where you can find one. Probably just pick one up at Home Depot. But the nice thing about that one is it has a um, spout out the back. And what we did, rather than use PVC pipe, which I know a lot of folks do, we just used a hose. We went to Home Depot and found one that was long enough. And then we had a, a hole cut out behind the washing machine, and then the hose just kind of goes out uh, to the side of the RV. I drilled a small hole with a hole saw, and then the hose comes out, and then we put a little bit of screen inside that hose so bugs can't climb up in, into it. And then also, while I was at Home Depot, I bought this stuff called Great Stuff. And it is, you know, you put a you spray and it just expands immediately. It dries and then I cut it back off and shaped it. So it worked really well to then capture um, that hose in place. And then it has the ability to stop any kind of like bugs from coming back up in that. It's a neat can of stuff. I recommend you pick, up, pick one of those up. The next thing you're gonna see during the install is us uh, hooking up the, the water, both hot and cold. And then we took those hoses to the sink. Um, I attached them, Melinda and I attached them to the back put them in the sink, and then turned each one on independently. So we tested to make sure there was no leaks in the back and no leaks on the side. And then we got all the air out. So that worked very well for us because our sink is also right here. So finally, um, you're going to notice there's, I think, four of these in the back of the washing machine and it kind of holds the drum in place. Just make sure you remove them. They're kind of a pain. It's got this rubber grommet in the back. So even though once you unscrew it all the way, you still got to kind of put a little pressure on that to get this thing out. So for the dryer, um, there's a couple of things you need to make sure you do, and a lot of videos online talk about this, but make sure uh, there should be a mark in your wall with a, probably a, an X or a plus, and it tells you where to drill through. Um, so what I did was made a very small hole there, and then I used a, like a coat hanger, a, a steel one, and then I poked around. We have like a foam insulation on this in between our walls, and I was able to determine that there was no stud there. I've heard horror stories of folks starting to drill through and they find a stud. I also used a stud finder to look. It also said there was none there. So after both the stud finder on each side and then poking the, the coat hanger, the metal coat hanger around, I was pretty confident <laughs> there was no stud there and we were able to go drill through. Now, what I had done is I went out and I bought this Milwaukee hole dozer. It's a four inch hole. Uh, this is the specific hole size that you need for um, the exhaust for the dryer. Now one thing 
I didn't do was buy the, the proper accessory. I have hole saws at home. I have an old one like this, and I've used it for years on wood. And it's a simple, you know, you put it through here and you, and you use a pilot hole and you drill the hole. So I didn't think further enough ahead that maybe this Milwaukee one, it has a different hole pin configuration on the back, which did, was not compatible with my drill. So I had to go back, I think this was a three tripper to Home Depot, and I had to buy a special um, jig, whatever they call this thing, to align with the Milwaukee, and then I was able to drill through that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it all at once, so again, it was part of that three tripper to Home Depot. But once I had uh, that in place, I was able to get through that fairly quickly. Um, make sure on the outside what you do is you put a bunch of uh, blue tape in place, like this, uh, so that when the drill comes through, you don't kind of chip your paint or you chip your uh, outer exterior of your, uh, of your trailer, because you want to make sure that hole doesn't do that. So then uh, the opposite step of that is we drilled through so the drill bit came through the, the wall, then I went back outside of the RV and I had it all taped up with that blue tape, and then I drilled back through again, um, rather than doing it all from the inside. And that seemed to work out fairly well. So that was the, the biggest issue realistically for us, was getting that hole done. Um, once the hole was done and, and put into place, um, there's an accessory kit that you should also purchase for these wash and dryers. Use it. The kit that you need then comes from the back and it routes right back out and does the exhaust. And then on the side of the RV, there's a little kit that you can put as well that routes the air down and doesn't allow bugs and stuff to fly in. So all in all, there's a couple of different options. So make sure you, you pick up all the right options and kits that you need. Because if you just buy the washer and dryer, you don't get everything you need. So I'll put a link to all the stuff that we bought down below. Uh, you can get it direct from Splendid or whomever, Amazon, whatever. Um, but just make sure you plan ahead and you get all the proper stuff you need so you don't have to make it a three tripper to Home Depot like we did. Um, all in all, it, it's then worked very well for us. Uh, we were able to get to our first RV site and test it. Um, we did not leave when we did that. We ran a couple of loads, um, no runs, no drips, <laughs> so perfect there for us. We also have a little alarm in the bottom, way down here. I'll put a link to that as well. So it's a water alarm, and we, you, you put the sensor underneath the washing machine and put it in the way in the back, uh, and then it connects to the Wi-Fi in our trailer so that um, when we're camping, of course, we have the, the, the router on and it creates a Wi-Fi bubble, and then it could send me a signal to my cell phone if something should go wrong. Uh, that's about it. Again, we wanted to do this really quickly. We didn't want to go into slow motion and showing you all the installs. That's why we did a couple of the uh, time lapse. So I hope that's beneficial to you. If you have any questions, just put them down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. So if you haven't done so yet, please remember to hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell so that it reminds you when we post new videos.